Uh, it's great to see you for part two of our service this morning and uh, <clears throat> as we come around the word of God. You know, it's funny, I just realised just, just the other day that today is actually, it's Palm Sunday. So this is the day we we, we remember of the Jesus um, went into Jerusalem, he went rode on the, on the back of a donkey and all the people were there and they're out shouting, Hosanna, Hosanna to the son of David, to the king of kings, the Lord of Lords. And they came in, in, in triumph, triumphal procession, and um, and this is this is what we're remembering from two two thousand years ago, and um, I always try and put myself in a position of you know what would it have been like what would it have been like to have been there, I love I love um, um, Back to the Future and the whole thing about having a time machine go back and have a look and just seeing you know, just being and seeing wondering what was it like. What would it have been like on that day, 2,000 years ago? Well, it would have been interesting for, for start because Jesus had said to his disciples, he said this, he said, look, we're going to Jerusalem. I'm going to Jerusalem for my death. And um, and there was there was several, two reactions, and well, several reactions with it. One, one was Peter was like, well, no, Lord, no, Lord, don't speak like that. And he kind of, almost like he, he told Jesus off. And then Jesus said, you know, Peter, get behind me, Satan. He said, because, you know, he said, you're just seeing the small picture, but this is what God's will is. But also we know that um, the people of God, and I think also the disciples, also believe that that Jesus was going to be the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. He was going to be, he was going to establish a kingdom here on earth. And what that would have meant would have been that the, the Israel would have been this mighty kingdom. They believed that they were that Jesus was going to go there, become the king. They were going to boot out the Romans because what have the Romans ever done for us? I mean, what have they ever done for us? You know, of course, you know they built all those other things. Yes, yes, I know they built roads, but yeah. So, but this is what they assumed. They assumed that Jesus was going to be the King of Kings. He was going to be established on his throne. This is why the king at the time. This is why King Herod, when they said about a new king coming, this is why they were afraid because. They thought that the king would take, take the throne. The same with uh, same with the disciples. They thought Jesus was going to be the king, and and so would kick out the Romans and would establish God's rule and reign on the earth. So I think they probably were a little bit kind of not quite sure what to expect. I guess they had their hopes and their dreams of what they kind of thought might happen, but they also had to guess these probably these fears in the back of their mind of what if. What if what Jesus had said? What if it, what Jesus had said was right? What if he was going to his death? What, what would that mean? What would what would happen? And what about Jesus? What did Jesus think? Jesus, we know, was fully God, but he was fully human. Jesus knew exactly, exactly what the week had in store for him. He knew he was definitely going to his death. He knew that, and and it wasn't going to be. It wasn't just you know just. Uh, him getting ill or whatever, it was going to be a cruel, a, a, a terrible, terrible thing he was going to go through. How did Jesus feel at the beginning of that week? The human part of him must have had some kind of apprehension. Maybe not fear, but at the, the you know at the, what he was going to be facing for that week. What did Jesus feel? The God part of him knew that actually, look, this was this was what he was. This was what he was here for. This was his mission. His mission was to make a way where there was no other other way. He knew that he was the perfect sacrifice. He knew that his life was going to be laid on the line. He willingly gave his life so that you and I could experience salvation because there was no other good enough. Jesus was the only one who was able. To pay the price, and so he knew that that was that was the outcome, but there must have been something in the back of his mind that kind of a bit of apprehension, a bit of kind of maybe not fear, but a bit of something there that just would have, would have you know. And we know this uh, because in in um, on in the in the prayer at Gethsemane, Jesus is there and he's praying. He said, "Lord," he said, "Father, if this cup can pass from, from me, but not my will." But your will be done. And so this probably the most amazing week in terms of Christian things. Go from one moment where everyone's shouting Hosanna, everyone's shouting, you know, 
welcome the king of kings to the next few days they're shouting crucify crucify kill him kill him he's not our king we have no king but caesar and it's not unsimilar to, to where we face today uncertainty and fear is is, is ruling our nation right now we're reading increasing numbers of, of people dying 700 and six or something yesterday and awful 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 figures coming out from the news the queen is is addressing a nation tonight at late o'clock um to to allay people's fears and to to just to bring that to thank people for for what they've for, for abiding by by the rules and, and what, what the government are asking us to do uncertainty and fear is coming on our nation and I was reading yesterday in, in, in Isaiah 25, and it says this, O Lord, I will honour and praise your name, for you are my God. You do such wonderful things. You planned them long ago, and now you've accomplished them. You turn mighty cities into heaps of ruins. Cities with strong walls are turned to rubble. Beautiful palaces in distant lands disappear and will never be rebuilt. Therefore, strong nations will declare your glory. Ruthless nations will fear you, fear you. But, verse 4, you are a tower of refuge to the poor, O Lord, a tower of refuge to the needy in distress. You are a refuge from the storm and a shelter from the heat. For the oppressive acts of ruthless people are like a storm beating against a wall or like the relentless heat of the desert. But you silence the roar of foreign nations as a cloud of shade cools relentless heat. So boastful songs of ruthless people are stilled. And then it goes on. I'm just going to read a little bit about that a little bit later on. Verse 2, though, it talks about that. It says, you turn mighty cities into heaps of ruin. Cities with strong walls are turned into rubble. <laughs> Now, our cities at the moment, um, th maybe they're not turned into heaps of ruins, but into in, um, and into uh, piles of rubble. But our cities are deserted. Our cities are kind of are desolate. And when you see the things on, and, and they were saying, these are unprecedented times, perhaps times that we'll never see again, where our cities are kind of like ruined, uh, um, kind of like empty. In fact, I think I saw on the news the other day where the, the goats that came down because uh, and they came and they were eating from people's gardens and there's no one there to shoo them away to say, get out of here, you know, and all this kind of stuff. And you see this from these apocalypse films that the animals begin to take over, over the cities and come and come and, and roam freely there. And so this is kind of this kind of this is this this kind of this this message where you, you turn cities have been turned into ruins, cities have been turned into 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 uh, into into rubble. But then in verse 4 it says this, But you, our Lord, you are a tower of refuge for the poor. You are a tower of refuge for the needy in distress. You are a tower, O Lord. Now I come from, from the city of Rochester in Kent. And there's, there's two pretty amazing things. There's, there's an amazing cathedral that's, that's still there, working cathedral there. And there's this amazing castle. Um, the castle would have had a, a, a great city wall, but it was it was the stronghold. The stronghold was the keep. The stronghold was the keep, and it's pretty much there today as it was um, a thousand years ago. Pretty much there today. The only thing it was only ever breached once, only ever breached once by uh, King John. You remember King John? Remember Prince John, who was ro from Robin Hood? Well, he became king, and he he laid siege to this 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 fortress. And, um, and but it was a strong refuge, a strong tower, a place where um, uh, the enemy came against it, and it was only through um, many through years, and they eventually what they did was they tunneled underneath one of the uh, one of the towers, and they propped it up with wood, and then they they, they burnt that wood, and it burnt, and and the, and the tower one of the towers fell down, and they went in, and they defeated the, those who were opposing them. Then they built it up again. We know this because they built it up again, and they built. Uh, one of the towers with with a round tower, so it's got three square towers on one round tower, which was which was the etiquette, and that's that's what they believed was how they would do things. 
for Rochester Castle, the, the keep was a strong tower, a strong refuge. And Psalm 27 said this, The Lord is my light and my salvation, so why should I be afraid? The Lord is my fortress, protecting me um, uh, from trouble, from danger. So why should I tremble? And another psalm, it says, You are my hiding place. The Lord is our fortress. The Lord is our refuge. And it says, if you make the Lord your refuge, he will protect you. He will watch over you. He will guard you. So today, the Lord is our fortress. The Lord is our stronghold. The Lord is our hope. Whilst on that week coming into um, Palm Sunday and coming into Holy Week, everything looked great. But Jesus knew it wasn't great. He knew what was going to happen. And, and and it might look like that. It might look, and we're kind of building up towards Easter. And they're saying that Easter Sunday, Easter day, is where the, the peak of perhaps the deaths will be, which for, for me as a Christian, is it totally breaks my heart. But, you know, there is hope. There is hope in Christ Jesus if we make the Lord our fortress. And I'm not saying that, you know, that if we make the Lord our fortress, that, you know, totally we will be protected. But... In terms of life and death but you know if we make the lord our fortress if we make him our fortress that one day we will be with him and we will be like him and we will spend eternity with him yes i do believe that god is protecting over us. and i thank god that he's looked after karen you know with karen with, with when, when we've been through um this the coronavirus the fact that she had diabetes she has high blood pressure um, put her right in that trouble mix. Um, but th I thank you, Jesus, that you protect it and watch over. But also we know that some of our friends have succumbed to this dreadful virus. And uh, our prayers are with the families of those who've lost loved ones. But if we make the Lord our for refuge, if we make the Lord our fortress, then we'll have nothing to fear. Because even, you know, even if, even if I lose my life today, I know that I'm going to go and spend eternity with Jesus. And, you know, we, God is for us. He is not against us. We have a God who loves us, who is who wants, who is our strength, is our fortress. He protects us. But we also have an enemy, a real enemy. He tells us in John 10.10, 10, I've come that might have, might have life and have it more abundantly. But also it says that there is there's a thief who comes, who comes to steal kill and destroy that's the enemy that is the enemy he comes to rob you today rob you of your peace but jesus said peace i give you the peace that the world cannot give so cling on to the peace that jesus brings in isaiah it talks about it says have that the joy of the lord is your strength the joy of the lord is your strength have that joy in the lord Ask the Lord for that joy. Ask the Lord for the joy and the strength. Because joy will carry us through. Praise will carry us through. When praise is on our lips, we haven't got time to be worried and fear. Praise defeats the enemy. Praise, you know, I talked about this with Jehoshaphat last week. Praise defeated the enemy. Praise. When the people of God praise the Lord, the enemy attacked each other and they were, and they were defeated. Praise that so joy have that joy of the Lord. Let joy be the hallmark of your life. Let peace, let the enemy not rob you of the peace of God. The peace of God that transcends all understanding. What does that mean? Well, it, it beggars, you know, beggars belief. It it, it it goes totally beyond our understanding. We go through all these difficult times, but yet still we feel that peace of God. In our lives, the peace of God, the peace of God. Isaiah tells us this in verse 6. In Jerusalem, the Lord of heaven's armies will spread a wonderful feast for all the people of the world. It will be a delicious banquet with clear, well-aged wine and choice meat. I say amen to that. It says there he will remove the cloud of doom and the shadow of death that hangs over the earth. And he will swallow up death. Forever, the sovereign Lord will wipe away all tears. 
he removed forever all insults and mockery against his land and his people. The Lord has spoken. And this Easter week, Jesus came to swallow up death forever, that he will wipe away every tear. And it says, there he will remove the cloud of gloom and the shadow of death that hangs over the earth. Jesus removes the shadow of death, the, the, the gloom that hangs over this world. Let's pray, shall we? Father, we just thank you today, the Lord, that you remove the shadow of the cloud of gloom and the shadow of death that hangs over the earth at this time. Father, we thank you for the hope that there is in Jesus. We thank you for the peace that there is in Jesus. We thank you for the, that the joy of the Lord is our strength. And today, Lord, we ask that the joy of the Lord would be our strength. Lord, that you'd clothe us in your peace. You'd clothe us in your peace. And that uncertainty and fear would be gone in Jesus' name. Would be gone in the name of Jesus because that is there's no place here in our lives. No place here in our lives. And so, Father, we just thank you for today for your goodness. We thank you for your love. We thank you that you're for us, that you are not against us. And Lord, we just lift up those who are in need today. Lord, we pray you'd be with them. Pray you'd strengthen them, Lord God. We ask, Lord, that they would recognise you as their hope. And for those, Lord, who don't know you, Jesus, Lord, I ask that you'd just speak to them. You'd just reveal, Lord, your great love to them. Lord, you'd reveal to them, Lord, that you are our tower of refuge, that you are our strength. You are our a fortress in times of trouble you are our, and lord and when we are found in you no nothing nothing can come against us nothing can defeat us so lord we just thank you for your goodness thank you for your love thank you that you're for us that you are not against us in jesus name we pray amen well that's the end of our service today just thank you for listening um i hope um we did something slightly different with the um with the technology today some a couple of us went down to church to um we've been all we've all been self isolated and we kept away from the distance and we tried to do something slightly different we'll probably do something different again next week to see how we go trying um just to to, to bring something that's going to bless you and to encourage you so um so um so yeah just thank you for listening pray god's blessing upon you ask that god would just look after you this week keep you keep you safe he'll be with you i remember the Lord is our hope. The Lord is our joy and our strength. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Just remember that now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Take care. God bless. See you soon. Take care.